All right. So I am really excited to be participating of another Sequanora foray and even more excited to be joining you tonight with our scientific advisor, Megan Romberg. My name is Serenela Linares. I'm a member of the DNA committee, along with Tom McCoy and Megan. And Megan, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Megan Romberg. Tom's really the chair of the DNA committee. Um, but along with Serenella and me, we've been doing a lot of work over the last couple of years, and we are excited to be gathering samples at Sequinota this year. Wonderful. So our first order of business is sharing with you um, what we're going to do to record the data while at Sequinota. Megan, if you can take us to slideshow and into the next slide. Um, where is slideshow on this? It seems to have gone away. <laughs> oh, no. uh, yeah, I've been looking for it and I don't seem to see it. Is there any way we can just, or I can yeah. hide my ribbon. Uh, you can I see all my bookmarks. Um, okay. You don't get anything with a right click. Um, oh, now I made it even smaller. There you go. It's slideshow. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Nice. Okay. Nice. Thank you everyone for your patience while we work through this. Yeah. Next slide. So the primary depository of all of our data for the project, for the DNA project and for Sequinota, it's going to be the iNaturalist platform. So the very first step that we need everybody at Sequinota to do is today, right now, um, download the iNaturalist app in your phone if you haven't already and make sure that you have an iNaturalist account. So you can do that from your phone, um, certainly any time sure. before Friday would be fantastic. Um, and you can also create your iNaturalist account directly from your computer visiting the iNaturalist.org website. Dave, uh, Dave Wasserlewski, I think that's Dave Wasserlewski. Um, Dave Wasserlewski, yes, I have a question. Sure. I don't have an iPhone, I don't use a phone. I use a camera. I'm, I'm not even sure there's GPS setting on the camera. I have an iNaturalist account. I mean, I can make I can make posts and um, just paste in um, GPS if necessary, but I don't use a, a phone. Right. So the easiest way to do your observations would be with your a smartphone. But if that is not the case, you could certainly take well very good observations using uh, GPS coordinates. If you have a way to obtaining your GPS coordinates when you are with the mushroom, that would be fantastic. So every single piece of detail that we have in the voucher will help us ID your um in the voucher and in the pictures will help us ID. And um, by you recording the coordinates, that will make a complete observation. You had a follow-up question? Yeah, I, I, I don't have a device that records GPS coordinates. I could paste them in later by just finding them on a map. It's not that hard. But my if I'm not gonna make observations to INAT from the field. I will have to do it later on on my computer. 
Correct. And at, at that time, um, I mean, I can just take notes in the field and have a pretty good idea of where I am and create GPS coordinates that are at least very close to, um, you know, to the exact ones and then just paste them into the um, observation on INAT. Um, if you, if you just, if you create, I've created observations on INAT and if you don't tell it GPS coordinates, it, it comes up with, with some corny sort of location that's, you know, a little bit better than North America. Um, so, you know, I realize I am going to want to put in GPS coordinates. They may not be exact because I don't use a device, but I can get pretty darn close by just, you know, um, yeah, finding I mean, the location map. I would say let's just put a pin in this because Dave is super, super experienced with uh, making observations and doing taxonomy. So, you know, we, I think we can just work work out a best practice at Sequinota. That it, it's, uh, yeah, that that these are all solvable solvable problems. I think. Absolutely, they are, yeah. and uh, part of why I want to entertain this question during the training is because I understand that there might be other people like Dave that may not be as comfortable using um, a smartphone. So yes, when you upload from your computer and you do a batch upload, we can certainly find the location where you were. Now, because we are trying to do as accurate as a possible observation, what will be helpful is to tag along with someone that has the a, the phone or a GPS device, so you get as close as possible to where you're at. Um, and we can certainly talk about this more, and I can demonstrate this one-on-one -on -one while we are at Sequanota. Uh, that, that's a good suggestion. I'll just have a pen and paper and, um, you know, there'll probably be somebody within hollering distance, you know, and I'm sure Absolutely. I can get GPS in the field. That's that's a good idea. Thanks. Absolutely. Megan? Yes. I see a flower. Oh, oops. <clears throat> I don't see anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So iNaturalist, how does iNaturalist work? Well, it's an AI. Um, artificial intelligence. And so as we put in more information, as we put in more images of different things, um, iNaturalist is able to use those images and help us uh, provide IDs. It also serves as a data repository. And for the DNA group, we decided to use iNaturalist basically as our data repository. When we get in a sample, we use the iNaturalist identifier as the unique number that follows that sample through all the processes so that we're not putting in extra numbers and getting confused about what someone called it in the field. And we're gonna change that a little bit um, for this. We're going to also be using voucher numbers because of the way that it works to put in IDs in the field versus not. Um, but um, we're, we're using iNaturalist because of all of its power and because it's um, a really good place to put all the data. So you may not be able to see the top of this, but it works on all sorts of platforms. As Dave mentioned, you can go on your computer and use it on your computer. You can use it on a tablet. You can use it on an Android phone. You can use it on an iPhone. And what it... Oops, sorry. Um, so that uh, iNaturalist observations will record what you saw via the pictures that you provide, when you saw it via the data that is attached to the picture that you take, evidence of what you saw. Sometimes people are not able to capture the entire organism, but if you capture the wing of a butterfly, for example, um, sometimes you will not be able to see the entire fungus, but if you see the fruiting body, that is also evidence of the organism. So 
for other organisms outside of fungi, evidences such as uh, footprints are, are also fair game and identifiable to some extent. And what Dave was referring is where you saw it. When you have the location services activated on your smartphone for your camera, what the phone is gonna do is attach the data based on the GPS of where you were. And also because all of these observations are made under your profile, we will be able to determine who you are. Now the vouchers will also have your iNaturalist handle and the collecting ba bag will also have your iNaturalist handle because mushrooms look very different when they're dried than when they are fresh. So it is very helpful for the DNA committee to have the person who took that picture, the person who made the observation, so we can go and check what um, we need to, if we need to. Next. I, I was gonna jump in when when you were talking about that. So when you create your iNaturalist account, of course, you put in a username, a handle. Um, there are some people in the club who are super creative and have really creative handles, like we are the champignons. Um, you can put in your name, but uh, be thinking about what handle you want because it sticks with you. Um, and uh, creative ones are really easy to remember or easier to remember in some cases. So um, in the observation, this is a clear example of we are the champignons, better known as Annie. <laughs> um, and it's it records that encounter between you and the mushroom. Um, that GPS data is able to be searched and recorded and data mined for everybody in uh, the iNaturalist uh, platform. Um, so this is a screenshot of what an observation looks like. And the best observations are the observations that have different perspectives, different angles. Um, and we will talk about those details in a future slide. Next. All right, so there are three ways to make an observation. You can do it on site. You can do it from a camera roll, if, if you've got a camera or from your camera roll on your phone um, and via a gallery or batch upload. So when you're walking along and you see a mushroom and you take a picture of the top and the underside and the habitat, um, that can take some time. And then waiting in the forest can also take some time, especially if you don't have a very good connection. So um, you can take them in the field and put them straight into iNaturalist, but you can also save them on your camera roll and then upload them later. And for the purposes of Sequinota, we're recommending that we do the second one, that you take your observations on your phone and then upload them once you're back at Sequinota and have better signal. Um, that way you're not spending a whole lot of time in the forest. Um, we can also do it from the computer using a batch left upload. Um, so play around. If you've not used iNaturalist before, I know a lot of people on this call have used it a lot. But if you haven't used it before, just play around a little bit um, before sequin notice so that you know what you need to push and where you need to go. Um, I, I, have, I have another question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Regarding batch uploading, yeah, I, I don't do that. Um, if I find something that's really nice, um, I'll take a lot of photos and then I sort through them and pick out, you know, maybe four or five that are that seem particularly useful. And then I just put them on one at a time. Um, so I don't send like, you know, a great big file to INAT. Um, I, I, I just post individual photos when, when I make an observation. It takes a little bit longer. Um, but are we going to want to do this during the foray? Is this going to be re necessary to do all this during the foray? Or could it be done later on? 
Well, I, we'll want at least, and, and we'll get into this in a minute, we'll want at least the image that contains the voucher slip um, during while we're at Sequinota. So oh, okay. we okay. need at least okay. that okay. image yeah, that's... voucher slip and we need that iNaturalist number so that we can keep track of the samples. If you want to go and add pictures later, that's great, but we will need at least that one picture. Is that does the photo with the voucher slip need to be an in situ? Uh, because if the lighting is no good where the specimen happens to be, it's not going to be a very good photo. Um, so. You understand that, Dave? And for photographic purposes, that picture may not be appealing to you, but that picture is cru crucial for us. That is a protocol step that we have established because we have experience in the past a lot of confusion and we didn't know really who took the picture, who took the sample, and we couldn't corroborate what belonged to that. So by having a picture that has the mushroom and the voucher on it, a voucher that has the sample number and your iNaturalist handbook, handle, we will make sure to know that mushroom was collected by Dave in this date, and this is our no sample number. It's really important. I understand that you may want as a photographer to appear to have a, a standard of appearance for your pictures, but that picture needs to be there for scientific purposes. Okay, so so the this photo, the important thing is really the voucher slip with yes. yeah. uh, the information written on it. Um, yeah, and ideally, I, I imagine... I do, yeah, ideally enough of the mushroom that we can sort of recognize it, because yeah, by the know, time I... it's in and dried and everything else, um, we you know was that a, you know a poured mushroom? Was that a mushroom with gills? So that we can match things up. No, no, I understand the problem. I mean, there's going to be a lot of mushrooms here, and the, the potential for confusing um, collections is, is you know, really something to, to have to be thought out carefully like you're doing. Um, I, I imagine it's okay to harvest a specimen very carefully, make sure the entire thing's intact, and maybe move it a few feet away to where the lighting's a little bit better so I can get a better photo. Oh, yes, absolutely. I see Tom nodding. That's um, that's good. Okay, that's what I, that's what I usually do. Actually, so, I mean, it's going to throw the GPS off by like you know point zero 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 one or something like that. It's not going to matter. Right. It, the the mycelium is probably still there in that space anyway. So <laughs> absolutely. Oh, wow, good point. <laughs> All right, so um, because we'll be at Sequinota and won't have really good signal, um, we're gonna use option two. Um, so if you're using a smartphone, um, before arriving, make sure that you have the GPS turned on, all the things about collecting, and we'll talk about this when we're at Sequinota, and this is really for people who haven't done this much before, the water, the pocket knife, vouchers, and we will be handing out the voucher slips. And I know that we haven't shown a picture of them yet, but we will have specific voucher slips um, to hand out to people. You're going to want a pen or a pencil so that you can write on the voucher slip, um, mm -hmm. and you may want to pre-write your handle on some of them so that you're not doing it in the forest. Um, and sampling bags. Um, we'll have some specific sampling bags and you can bring your own, of course. Um, so this is the voucher that we're using. It's based off of the Fundus voucher, but Sarah Nella did some magic. And so now it says the Sequinota 4A 2023 voucher. The important thing to note is that it has a unique number on it. So Sarenelle, you have 750 of these? No, my darling, I have a thousand. You have a thousand of these. Okay. <laughs> so we're not going to be lacking in vouchers. So no. take a stack and you'll have this number on it. Write on the voucher also your INAT handle. And when you are collecting and you have your sample bag, make sure that this number matches the number on your sampling bag because this is what we're going to use to track the samples that are collected in the field and when they're brought in. All right. So once you've found your mushroom, 
uh, clean off your camera lens. Mine is always dirty. Before you touch it, clear any debris around the mushroom. Take a picture that describes the habitat. I tend to step back a little bit just to show, am I under pines? Am I under oaks? Where am I? Um, and then zoom in. These are some examples of good images. Of course, you've got the cap, you've got the pore surface on the underside, you've got a collection that shows kind of the different sizes that you're seeing. Um, you will need, and we'll talk about this a little, little bit more, we're focusing in part on bolites, so you will need to make scratches on the bolites to look for staining. Um, but of course, you don't want to be pulling it apart too much um, out there in the field. We will probably end up cutting off some of it if it's quite a big mushroom once it comes in for drying and, and processing, um, but try to keep it as intact as possible. Serenella, am I, is this still me or is this you? Um, so this is me. So this is the point that we were trying to make um, with the voucher picture with the mushroom that also shows your um, handle. And if you can shrink a little bit the size of that slide, um, Megan, there you go. See at the bottom of that picture, you can see that it was collected by me and also um, my iNaturalist handle matches my first name. So that's why you see it twice. But that is really important to have. If nothing else that you include in that voucher before you take that picture, I want that left column. It's really important. Then you can, um, when you come back, you can also uh, fill the rest. I, ideally, you will be filling up the voucher right then and there so you can capture as uh, accurate data as possible. But if you're tired, because we know at the end of the hike, you might be just fill that left column that has all the data that we need to track the specimen. And make sure that that red number is visible in your pictures. So if you've never done an observation before, um, what you're gonna do is open the iNaturalist uh, application after you have taken the pictures. Um, and let me backtrack one second. In the previous slide, I believe I requested that you take a series of pictures of your mushroom, but the last picture that you take of your mushroom, it's gonna be this one with the voucher. That will provide us with the information that you need, but that will also provide you a clear cut between pictures of mushrooms. So you know that always the last picture of the series, it's gonna be the picture that has the voucher. So that establishes clarity for you. It also provides data for us. Next slide, Megan, thank you. So now, you took all your pictures, you are happy and you are ready to make your iNaturalist observations. So you're gonna open your iNaturalist app. If you have it in your phone, you can open it in your phone. And as Dave mentioned, you can add those pictures one by one. Once you have finished adding all the pictures that you want, there is a second, um, a second a tab in there where it asks you, what did you see? And that is where, when you select that, what did you see question, the artificial intelligence on a naturalist is going to look at all the observations that are similar looking to what you have to produce a prediction. Now, what I would, suggest what most experts suggest is that you don't need to get things to species just get it to the 
taxon that you're most comfortable with. In the case of a Roshula, it might be, oh, I know this is Roshula parvovirescence, but maybe you just know it's a mushroom that looks like, a, like an umbrella, so that's an agaricalis. It is great. Just leave it at the level that you're most comfortable with so the other scientists can come and curate that observation to the best of their ability. Once you are done, you can click on share and that observation then goes into the database and goes live. Once the observation has been shared, it will have an unique observation number. That observation number is found when you click um, sharing the observation outside of the iNaturalist platform. The last number on the link is the observation number. Uh, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, at the facility, which will be our headquarters, um, will internet be available? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they have Wi-Fi available. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. They better have, because we need it. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, okay. there's the, the cell, phone, cell phone reception in the Laurel Highlands is pretty crappy in general, <laughs> and it's basically non-existent at our facility, but uh, the Wi-Fi there is pretty, uh, is pretty decent. So uh, we'll have that password posted on the uh, chalkboard. Yep. We feel you, Martin. 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 Yeah, it's, it's definitely not fiber optic, but uh, it's good enough. For what it's we good need. enough. Mm -hmm. All right. So two of the groups that we're focusing on in the DNA committee, just overall outside of sequinota, are rushulas and bolides. Um, and so we're going to include rushulas and bolides in what we capture at sequinota. But at sequinota, we're also expanding it a little bit because we have historical information about what's been collected and we can go back and find some other interesting things. So you don't need to... Um, constrain yourself to rushulas and bolates, but we are kind of focusing on them as part of the DNA work. So a rushula, of course, um, an observation of that is, is fairly straightforward. Um, you want, of course, the cap color, um, the margins, if you have any striations, you wanna make sure that you get the gills in, the, the attachment of the gills, the base, um, you know, sometimes you can have a different color at the base, or you can have a color that's moving up the stem. So um, just make sure that you get as much of the mushroom as possible and the habitat. For boletes, um, it's a little more complicated because with boletes, you want to look for some other characters, um, take a nice habitat picture uh, to the best of your ability, something close up, it's good to see the margins. Um, the base of the stem, the color of the cap. With a bolete, pretty much always you want to scratch it in some way. A lot of people make a little hashtag, some people make a little squiggly, some people make happy faces, um, but you want to look for that staining reaction and record it if you can. Um, sometimes they're fleeting, they might go green or blue quickly and then become dark. So you want to um, make sure that you get the color of the pore surface and also any staining reaction. And cutting bolides in half is also a really good practice because you can get staining that happens on the trauma, on the cap surface, staining that happens down the stipe. Um, and those are all really good characters um, to have in the observation. So this is a Boletus patrioticus from Martin um, that shows most of what you would want to see in a bolete observation. All right, Serenella. All right. So taking pictures, it's really fun, but it's all so much more fun to get good pictures that scientists can actually use to identify. 
<laughs> so how do you make sure that you are capturing everything that you're supposed to capture? Well, in the mushroom world, um, you have to get that habitat picture to show us how it's growing, but you also want to get close and you want that close picture to be as sharp as possible. So don't take a picture of a mushroom a mile away, please. Um, and the best zoom that you can ever have are your own two feet. So please get close to those mushrooms. Next. And once you get close, make sure that everything or most of the picture is in focus. And that will be accomplished by clicking or uh, selecting an area of focus that is closer to you when you are pointing your camera. If you click and click and click and it doesn't get sharp for some reason, clean your lens. <laughs> That's all that there is. Uh, most of the time, you need to clean your lens fairly often, especially under humid conditions. So bring a t-shirt cloth or um, a microfiber piece of cloth so you can clean your uh, camera lens when you are in the forest. The lightning in the forest is also going to affect how sharp you can get that picture to be. So some people bring those selfie uh, lamps that you can put next to your camera to add additional lighting. So consider bringing a flashlight or an extend external uh, light source when you are in the thick of the forest to get your focus where it needs to be. Next. Uh, external light can can alter uh, color perception though. Absolutely can, uh, but at the same time, if you are queen of the little and Megan, you jumped too, so can you go back one? I think. No, okay, never mind. Sorry. Yes. Um, it can alter the color, so you may want to consider taking one with and without. But when you are trying to get those macro shots, it's really important to have enough light so that the lens can focus the way the way it should. It also helps us to separate your subject. In the mushroom world, that translates to clean out the debris around the mushroom. These mushrooms are coming from the ground up. So most of the time they're surrounded by fallen leaves or pieces of grass or another plant. So make sure that you have the cleanest shot possible. And then this is a good example of what a good light could have done for me, but I left it at home. Uh, this is a very, very small mushroom. Um, and with a little more lighting, you could have been able to see more detail on those hairs. As it is, we are looking at half of a centimeter to a centimeter cap that is covered in tiny hairs but you could have never been able to tell it from the naked eye. So if you carry your hand lens with you and you don't have a fancy phone adapter that helps you take macro shots, you can put your hand lens over the camera lens to make a macro shot of your mushroom so you can get even closer to really tiny, beautiful things. And then, I don't know about you, but if you're taking pictures of mushrooms, you must end in the floor, especially <laughs> when you are taking 
pictures of really tiny things. And this is a picture that Ana Kahanui from Capital Nature took of me trying to photograph the picture on the right of Seratio Mixa Fructiculosa. So if you are interested in um, slime molds, for example, um, get don't, don't be afraid to get dirty. Um, you can also uh, detach the bark with the mushroom attached to it after you have taken a picture of the habit, right? Um, so you can you could detach the bark and then position the mushroom or the slime mold in a place that is better for you, more comfortable to get all that sharpness and all that de detail that you want. I have also seen beautiful pictures of um, mushrooms that are photographed from the ground up. So that is another option. Um, bottom line is get um, outside of the box and just think of how can I capture all the beauty of this mushroom and all the science so it can be identifiable and go for it. <laughs> take um, take a, uh, as much pictures as you can and then up, upload the best to your observation. It's always to have a little more than we need than to have too little and not being able to ID. Next. All right. So tips and reminders, by now you are all experts and you're gonna do an amazing job when you are taking pictures at Sequanota. So in your excitement, please remember to replace any disturbed microhabitats. If you roll the log, roll it back to where it were. If you, um dispersed the leaves, the fallen leaves to capture something interesting under, please put them back so we can preserve the microhabitats. Um, if you're taking a lot, a lot of pictures, as I know all of you will, bring extra phone charger or extra battery packs so your phone can last as much as you want it to. Um, and optional tools to bring with you is a small ruler or a coin for scale. By the way, the edge of your vouchers are a section to be a ruler. So when you take that voucher picture, you're also taking a scale picture. How cool is that? So um, you might also bring a hand lens, a flashlight to get more light on your subject and a piece of white paper or black paper to separate your subject from the rest of the environment. I have seen pictures uh, from Alan Rockefeller that were taken with a black felt as the background and the lighting changed completely. The light exposure changed completely versus the natural background and made for very interesting pictures. So if you have access to a black felt, you may want to bring it and have a little fun with it. Um, and if you are seeing a mushroom that is attached to a living thing or a recently dead thing, you can also use iNaturalist to identify what type of tree or plant the mushroom is attached to. Next. All right. So um, in addition to just having really good observations with iNaturalist, we are using the information to add to our DNA sequencing work. Um, and so that's part of why we're having this conversation, because we want to make sure everyone's on the same page with what, what we need and what we're doing going forward. So the data, oops, sorry about that. Um, the data is used to track the progress of the project. So this is an example of an iNaturalist observation that is part of the MAW DNA group um, observations. 
So you've got the regular observation here on the left with a good picture of a Rushala and a few other pictures underneath. The GPS coordinates, the person that took the pictures. Information, um, the activity. So um, Annie put in Genus Rushala. Um, she put in some, some thoughts. Um, she said it's closest to this particular observation and she got that information actually from the DNA sequence and then another ID was suggested. And then you can see over here in the same observation, we also have the ITS DNA barcode. So ITS is a section of DNA. Um, it is actually part of the protein making machinery in a cell. And so it's something that all cells have. And in fungi, that's been decided on as the barcode sequence. Um, ITS sometimes can allow you to get a species ID if you compare this sequence to other sequences that are in a database. Sometimes you need more sequences, but it is the standard barcode ID that you get from all mushrooms when you start sequencing. So we, when we've generated ITS sequences for the mushrooms that we've been working with, we upload that back into iNaturalist. So we have all the information together. We have the picture, we have the GPS coordinates, we have the ITS, and then eventually once we get an herbarium specimen number, because we're planning on vouchering everything that we have, we will also put in the herbarium specimen number. And that gives you a complete record um, of what you saw. So for this project with Sequinota, this is what we will also have um, ideally. Um, especially if we get good ITS sequences from the things that we've collected. We'll have your excellent pictures from the field. We'll have the information on where it was found. We'll have um, information on suggested identifications and we'll have the ITS sequence. So as, as Sharon Ellis said before, um, join the projects, make sure you're on the projects before you get to Sequinota, sign up for iNaturalist. Um, you can also join the ModDC project and the ModDC DNA project if you're going to be submitting other things to ModDC um, for DNA sequencing in the future. Um, and get to know iNaturalist and the platform so that you're ready to go on Saturday. So you have here the two QR codes. So you can actually point your camera at each one of the QR codes and it will take you directly to the project and you can just click join right now. So you don't forget later. See how convenient. But should, should if that, you, should, I'm sorry? Yep, yeah, should that be my sequence for a 2023? The project. Oh, yeah. Join the projects. I, mean, in, now, I want in, to make sure uh, I join the right project. Yes. So the project, yes, in the bullet it says for a 2020 second. My apologies. But the project is 2023. And that one I checked. So <laughs> it will take you to the right project. No worries. Both of them. Uh, the Mycological Association of Washington, D.C., which is all year around. But the Sequinora 4A project starts on Thursday and ends on Monday because somebody is planning to stick around. <laughs> so, um, I have also pasted the slide link in the chat. So if you haven't created your iNaturalist account yet, but you will do so tonight because I know that you all are so excited to join the project. As soon as you get your iNaturalist account, you can click on the slides and join um, the projects directly from the links or the QR code. You can also save the slides uh, for your own instructional purposes, if you find them useful. Next. All right, so that is all for tonight. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us and for getting ready to get us all the data and to get 
this project going so we can learn more about the diversity of fungi. I would love to entertain some remaining questions with Megan. Um, I can't yeah, see I the chat. To, there uh, are some things in, if there are any questions in the chat, let us know. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention in addition to that wonderful presentation, ladies, thank you so much, is, um, so it's Equinota, in case you didn't know, uh, we really have the preeminent um, person working on molecular biology for fungi out there, and Stephen Russell, he'll be talking about it in his presentation. A lot of our observations will be leaving with him because he can just process high volume stuff. He uses uh, min-ion technology and I forget what the minimum is, probably at least 100, 100 samples at a time, maybe more. Uh, but in, in addition to that, Sarah Nella, Megan and I and a few other folks, we get together every month, more or less, we try to. And we run um, poly, uh, polymerase chain reaction, PCR, um, on these samples. And, uh, so we do, we do the lab work ourselves as well at, uh, at a slower pace, but, but, uh, nonetheless, uh, we, we get together and do that. I will be posting the details to our next lab meeting, which will be the Sunday after Sequinota at Mount Rainier facility where Saranella works. And we would love it if anybody wants to come by and see the second half of how all this works. First part is in the field to collect good observation data. And then the second part is to do the lab work to make sure that we get um, a uh, good genetic data to uh, help identify it. Okay. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> So um, if you want to join us, um, this is going to be a, a little program uh, attached to our work. We start our DNA sequencing work at 10 a.m., but by 1 p.m., we will be ready for you to ask a phone call a good question. <laughs> so. If you are bringing samples, please come closer to 10 a.m. If you are um, there to ask questions, then please come after 1 p.m. So we will have the machines working and we'll be ready to dedicate our um, attention, full attention to you. Um, I have a question, still have a question about joining the projects on INAT. Um, I, I have never done that and I'm not going to use a phone. So I'm not sure. Uh, how do I do that? How do I join a project on INAT? So do you, you already have your iNaturalist account, correct? Yeah, I have, I have an account. Yes. Okay. So... Um, I am going to paste the links here in the chat for you. If you give me a second, I'll extract oh, okay. them from the slides. And you just click on the link, um, sign in in iNaturalist. If it doesn't show like that you have signed already, sign in in iNaturalist, click on the link, and then you're going to see something that says join the project. So... Mm -hmm. Let me extract the links in a second. Okay, okay that's easy enough. Yes. Um, are, there, are there any, so you said the um, the focus will be on bullets and russulas, um, I, but, you, but it was also said that other things would be okay? Yes. Um, are, there, are there specifically things that we're not going to want to bother um, submitting? Not the trameties, not the stereums. <laughs> yeah, and we, do, we will be doing, so once some things come in, we will be doing a little bit of um, sorting and triaging 
Um, okay. In general, for the DNA sequencing, we avoid the hard ascomycetes, you know, the little hypoxylon or whatever you might have on a on a branch. Um, we're not doing lichens. We're not doing slime molds. Um, so we're but when things come in, we'll be doing some triaging. And I think it's pretty exciting that we can also look at the list from past years and sort of pick and choose some things and say, let's let's add this in. Um, because that's a lot more information than just a name on a list. Yeah, I um, might might also suggest um, that um, Amanite is formerly known as Section Lepidella. Might you might want to avoid those? They typically do not yield ITS. Mm. Yeah, we we have been sequencing some Amanitas um, in some of the other work that we've been doing, and we. Partly because of that, we have we are avoid them avoiding them in this first go round. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. I have posted the link to the Sequanora four a twenty twenty three in the chat, so it's now just a click away from you. Any other questions? I got conditions a question. Look good. Conditions look good. I, from what I can see, John, you're closer than I am, but I'm expecting a, a lot of stuff this weekend. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. I've been up there, but I say an inch and a half of rain when I look at Sequinetta. Are we going to have the slips at um at Shawnee or when are the slips coming? For the walk at Shawnee before Sequinetta? Uh, good question. Um, I I don't know that I'll be able to make it to Shawnee. Sarah Nella, were you going to go to the foray on Friday at Shawnee? I was planning to, yeah. So so it sounds like Sarah Nella will have some vouchers there. Um, yes. Yes. Um, FYI, I'm arriving early Friday. So if you get to the campsite before the before the foray starts and you wanna get a heads up, um, you know, a foot ahead, a step ahead, you can catch me on the campsite on Friday. Um, in the morning. Otherwise, uh, we'll start at the foray on Friday. I, I clicked on the link. Um, I see, you know, it took me to an INAT uh, page, but I did, and the name of um, the Sequinota foray was there, uh, but I didn't see any, any buttons to click uh, that said join. It said oh, members wow. only. <laughs> I see you, Susanna. <laughs> At the upper right hand side on the banner, you're going to see a rectangle that says join. Dave, you're I'm muted. Ready. Yeah. So, just in general, too, whenever we get to Sequinota, you know, we're going to have a couple of um, forays that uh, we're, you know, we're going to have several people from the sequencing team uh, go out together with whoever's interested in doing this and just give you lots and lots of uh, feedback in the field. Um, you know, it, it for everybody who's online, who's who's listening in tonight, uh, we would we would would really hope that you join us but doing a doing a foray to collect for citizen science like this is different than other types of forays you see something first thing you do you stop you observe you spend 10 or 15 minutes documenting and you know it, it's just different than what a lot of people were used to but uh i'm very encouraged by the uh number of participants that we have tonight. And, uh, you know, if you if you find that this is something that you'd like to learn more about, you're in luck because our club 
has our own equipment and we do the, uh, the lab work as well. So you can see the whole, the whole process. And uh, so uh, hopefully we can find a few more people to participate on our DNA sequencing group coming out of Sequinota. So I started sharing my slides so I can address Kelly's question. The first question, the second question was, are we gonna get separate bags for the specimens? And if you see in this slide, you're gonna get a voucher that has a singular unique number that is the number for the sample. And with that, you're also gonna get um, some sampling bags, AKA coffee filters with stickers that help really nicely dry our specimens in the dehydrator without having too much cross-contamination. So that's the purpose of the coffee filter bags. And yes, you will get the voucher and the coffee filter. In the realm of the bioluminescent and UV pictures, with your cell phone, you can get based on my experience. You might have more experience and luck than I have, but based on my experience, you can get really nice UV pictures um, of the mushrooms. The rushulas are uh, tend to be fluorescent, which means they react under the UV light. And you can get some nice pictures with your cell phone of that. For the bioluminescent fungi, it is almost impossible to get it with your phone. The sharpest bioluminescence pictures that I have been able to capture are in total darkness with a DSLR camera exp uh, and the shutter opened for about a minute or longer. So that means a really long exposure uh, with your camera. And my iPhone doesn't do that. <laughs> Yours may, but mine doesn't. I have tried. Um, in Puerto Rico, I did find a really brilliant bioluminescent mushroom and I was able to capture a white ghostly shadow <laughs> and that was it. So cell phone and bioluminescence, not really. Um, cell phone and fluorescence, great pictures. I hope that helps, Kelly. And we will be having a night walk again. I think Saturday night, although I'm reluctant to say it. It's going to be hard to be better than the one we had last year. That was the best. <laughs> oh, come on. Ask and the universe will provide. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. I get one last question? question. Yeah. Equipment that we need to bring. How many dryers do you have? Oh, I am bringing two. I already have them in my car. One of them is an Excalibur nine stage dehydrator. And the second one is an air fryer slash dehydrator. I think I heard Martin is bringing his as well. So there should be at the very least three. Okay. Oh. Monster. I'm and bringing, I'm, I'm bringing. I'm bringing one, and depending on what time the Amazon delivery guy gets here tomorrow, uh, maybe two. <laughs> then do you got Ziploc bags, bottle caps, and all that type of stuff, or I'll just try, try to plan what to bring? I'm sorry, what? Do you have like Ziploc bags, bottle caps, all that type of stuff? Bottle caps, I don't know why we would need bottle caps, but... Uh, Megan is bringing the Ziplocs. I am bringing the sample bags and the vouchers. Um, if you have suggestions, I'm all ears. Okay, I just bring all the stuff that I got, and we usually use bottle caps and stuff like that. To put or, the yeah, stuff what do you in. use bottle caps for? Like for um, all the little mushrooms, we put them in little bottle, like uh, 
hope so. Oh, teeny ones. Okay. So it'll blow around and stuff like that. We did a thousand specimens over the last weekend. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, bring your stuff. <laughs> I would love to see it in action. And thank you, Jacob. I am very thankful that you enjoyed it. All right. I guess if there are no more questions, thank you everyone for joining us. And we are very excited about this weekend. Yes, thank we you. are. I'll cut off the recording. Yes.